other children, but she missed Henry. When we climbed through the slopes of the cutting, we were eye-leveled with the white cups of the telegraph poles and the sizzling wires. Like lovely freehand, they curved for miles east and miles west beyond us, sagging under their burden of swallows. We were small and thought, thought we knew, we knew nothing, nothing worth knowing. knowing. We thought words travelled the wires in the shiny pouches of raindrops, each one seeded full with the light of the sky, the gleam of the lines, and ourselves so infinitesimally scaled we could stream through the eye of a needle. What was your childhood like? Well, uh, I'm sure it was, uh, was the same childhood of anybody brought up in the country in the 40s. And yet, I, I've, it was a happy childhood. I suppose you could use the word beautiful because in retrospect, you create your own childhood. Uh, it was at a, a time, just at the end of a certain kind of world, you know. And uh, when I think of it, it seems much, much longer away than 30 years ago. I mean, it seems hundreds of years away in some ways. It's really great thinking that one of, the, one of the best poets in the world went to this school. It feels amazing to know such a big famous person, one of the best poets in the world, sat here and went to Anna Horse just like all of the P6s now. Well, he inspires me, like, um, to um, write about my, um, like, childhood because um, Seamus Heaney wrote about like about um, doing the blackberry picking and um, how um, he described our school so maybe um, it would inspire some other people to do that. A childhood in the country in that, uh, well I use the word archetypal, it's very, a very organic kind of way of life. That, that laid down a, a, some kind of blueprint or some kind of sediment in myself that will never go. So my childhood in some ways is the secret life that, uh, that is most precious to me. Digging. Between my finger and my thumb, the squat pen rests, snug as a gun. Under my window, a clean rasping sound when the spade sinks into gravelly ground. My father digging. I look down till his straining rump among the flower beds bends low, comes up twenty years away stooping in rhythm through potato drills where he was digging. We moved to the world in 1954. 1954. It was a big family, wasn't it? It was, it was nine. Seven boys and two girls. And seven boys. And Tristor was killed in 1953. There was eight of us, six boys and two girls when we moved down here. Yourself and Seamus is two of the two of the elder ones. Uh, yeah, to do with uh, that. Seamus is the oldest of the family, and then there's two girls, Sheena and Anna. So mm. are both dead, and then I'm the next, I'm the next, I'm the oldest left now. And what was he like helping out in the farm? Was he? Oh, was, was Seamus, oh, Seamus could work in the farm. He's a good worker. Yeah. And that uh, the reflection is in his work, as you know, is a good, a good working man. Uh, working at school, working uh, on the farm too. 
the cold smell of potato mould, the squelch and slap of soggy peat, the curt cuts of an edge through living roots awaken in my head. But I've no spade to follow men like them. Between my finger and my thumb, the squat pen rests. I'll dig with it. This is your, your own childhood. How do you feel when you're reading these poems that describe your own upbringing? Well, uh, it's, it's very true what he's, what he's writing and what you admire, how you can they, they describe it, make it, yeah. make it sound so real in the languages, the descriptions. Yeah. And they can put in a few words, say a lot in a few words, which is a great asset to anybody. Some people can say a lot of words and say nothing, you know. Yeah. All I know is a door into the dark. Outside, old axles and iron hoops rusting. Inside, the hammered anvil's short-pitched ring, the unpredictable fantail of sparks, or hiss when a new shoe toughens in water. The anvil must be somewhere in the centre, horned as a unicorn, at one end square, set there immovable an altar where he expends himself in shape and music. All I know is a door in the dark is quite correct. And the reason he wrote that was he had never been in one. There was a lad going up past him, going to school on the far side of the road. That's why his poem to me was so good. His description was perfect. Arms were found like a unicorn in the centre of the door and all that was wrote, that was dead on. That's what I appreciated, that particular poem. So just the sounds alone gave him that sense of what was going on in here. Yeah. So in, in the poem itself, in the forge, who was the blacksmith? My father. He was, he was a, an engineer and smith. And his brother Harry was a horseshoe, and I was learning the material here, and he used the hammer and I used the sledge. Learned how to pull the hammer in when the sledge was coming down. Sometimes, leather aproned, hairs in his nose, he leans out on the jam, recalls a clatter of hoofs where traffic is flashing in rows, then grunts and goes in with a slam and flick to beat real iron out to work the bellows. What's my name? I was a student at the time of 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 the a uh, mishnach tho. Mae nor nor fi yn tu og os tu e cordant os chorum fabel nor e glacht er lo. Like is more on came er raig shin. Shus na shaskri hanig am leachtor dar vanim do fil a pubs mom. An el ferish agus vanig she cardlan. Shu nor e fi a John Newman, uh, Mike Longley, Seamus. Is a long stay in the mask. It's all I'm going to have in the Fivru, only a morning event. I hear again, a very gestured, a go hex publi. There were tensions as well. I think when you get young writers together, uh, there all, always are tensions. Competition? Um, sort of competition. Um, the kind of convection current, though, of aspiration. I was going to do a stock that I had in the whole other. I was going to, um, you know, a nod over, you know. Well, cook shin mishnacht. Personal helicon. As a child, they could not keep me from wells and old pumps with buckets and windlasses. I loved, I loved the, the dark, dark drop, drop, the trapped sky, the smells of 
water weed, fungus, and dank moss. One in a brickyard, the rotted board top. I savoured the rich crash when a bucket plummeted down at the end of a rope. So deep, I saw no reflection in it. We would nervously make sure that a poem was as polished as it could be before showing it to the other, you know. I mean, I can remember um, a personal helicon, which is, I'm very proud to say is dedicated to me. Um, and it was, it was perfect. It's a perfect lyric. Um, so there wasn't a great deal to say about it except well, that's marvellous, that's very, very beautiful. And uh, I remember when the proofs came through, my dear, <laughs> you know the bit about big-eyed Narcissus? Uh, that was misprinted, or there was a typo there, bog-eyed Narcissus. And I remember saying to Seamus, I think you should keep that, that's a real improvement. <laughs> Now, to pry into roots, to finger slime, to stare big-eyed Narcissus into some spring, is beneath all adult dignity. I rhyme to see myself, to set the darkness echo. I think it's a good thing, but it's a good thing. 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 Let's and form. I was delighted, of course, that uh, Seamus um, seemed to like my poems. I was a student at Queen's University, Belfast. In some sense, Seamus intervened, but he intervened in ways uh, that were productive and encouraging and uh, in my own case really was so generous. The word flachul truly does not apply to any other uh, literary presence in Ireland or beyond in the way that it applied to Seamus. Follower. My father worked with a horse plow. His shoulders globed like a full sail strung between the shafts and the furrow. The horses strained at his clicking tongue. An expert. He would set the wing and fit the bright steel pointed sock. The sod rolled over without breaking. At the head rig, with a single pluck of reins, 
The sweating team turned round and back into the land. His eye narrowed and angled at the ground, mapping the furrow exactly. I stumbled in his hobnailed wake, fell sometimes on the polished sod. Sometimes he rode me on his back, dipping and rising in his cloud. I wanted to grow up and plow, to close one eye, stiffen my arm. All I ever did was follow in his broad shadow run farm. I was a nuisance, tripping, falling, yapping always. But today, it is my father who keeps stumbling behind me and will not go away. He was blessed, wasn't he? And as Nana Cohen says, he was born with the gift of a golden voice. I mean, he had a, a particularly warm and deep voice, which is perfect for poetry. Um, I think Ted Hughes had that quality as well. And of course, there is a case for saying that Seamus drew some influence from Ted Hughes. So I think coming after Hughes, um, the sense of, um, of the authority of the human voice in Heaney's poetry has been a huge influence on, well, everyone, everyone who writes and reads in English. Dear Seamus Heaney, I have just given the audience some bits and pieces about reality and symbol in your poems. Let me now remind you of your own declaration of independence. Poetry can never be reduced to a political, historical or moral issue. In the final resort, poetry is its own reality. Ah, oh, just be fucking, be blunder a fucking. Well, we we say can sell good of good of an 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 ten of catch a stack of hats. Le le couple blien in us, you know. A quick she owner art in lien chintini, you know. Le le shkrek ah has as as the, you know. Come on, James. Well, we say can sell good of she till take it. I'm happy to convey to you, on behalf of the Swedish Academy, our warmest congratulations on the Nobel Prize in Literature for 1995. The Nobel Prize ceremony was uh, there was a kind of sense of joy, but I think he was also perhaps, as we were, you know, you're ever so slightly nervous in the run up to it. He was surrounded by friends, not just us, I mean, the family were there, but a lot of his friends. I mean, I remember the happiness of it. Ni Hredfa, an Irid Bruce, a Hagnurgana, as a Nobel. It made a huge difference in terms of his reach. A lot of people knew about him. He, uh, he travelled even more, as you say, particularly in, uh, I suppose, non-Anglophone countries after that. The public figure that he had was not that far removed from his own instincts to be, you know, gracious and polite and do the right thing. Unlike a lot of people, myself included, he actually did the right thing as opposed to just thought about it. You know, he would act on those impulses. In every part of the rest of the country of Bulaghe, right? Via Sig Seamus, Grosha Fevru, or Heaven's Line today. I could be an irritation ail of a goni, a chakt on Dormor, a chakter, right? I could be a roaning she, shasta flesh. When you have a great harvest, you're obliged to share it with the neighbours. Keeping going for Hugh. 
The piper coming from far away is you, with a whitewash brush for a sporran wobbling round you, a kitchen chair upside down on your shoulder, your right arm pretending to tuck the bag beneath your elbow, your pop eyes and big cheeks nearly bursting with laughter, but keeping the drone going on interminably between catches of breath. He wrote a poem for you, Hugh. Oh, <laughs> he wrote a poem for me. It's very special too. Uh, the chair upside down is the first, the first line, the first part. Of when I was, when I was a child, I had a, a great uh, a pipe dream of going to be a, be in a pipe band. You know, I wanted to be a piper. And is that? And it's, I, I suffer epilepsy. I have a problem with epilepsy. He. The strange is keeping going for, for me for sometimes a blackouts and that's and even a bit of milk and parlour. Mm. It was very special. Mm. This great, great emptiness, you know. And then let me fill there. My dear brother, you have good stamina. You stay on where it happens. Your big tractor pulls up at the diamond. You wave at people. You shout and laugh above the revs. You keep old roads open by driving on the new ones. You called the Piper's Sparns whitewash brushes and then dressed up and marched us through the kitchen. But you cannot make the dead walk or right wrong. I see you at the end of your tether sometimes in the milking parlour, holding yourself up between two cows until your turn goes past, then coming to in the smell of dung again and wondering, is this all? As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be? Then rubbing your eyes and seeing our old brush up in the byre door and keeping going. Those of us who are left and uh, are stumbling along in his shadow as he stumbled behind his father and the team of horses. Um, you know, one of the things that we need to uh, think about also is what would Seamus do in this situation? You know, what would be the decent thing to do? Air from another life and time and place pale blue heavenly air is supporting a white wing beating high against the breeze. And yes, it is a kite. As when one afternoon all of us there trooped out among the briar hedges and stripped thorn, I take my stand again, halt opposite Anahorish Hill to scan the blue, back in that field to launch our long-tailed comet. We shared enthusiastically in grandfatherhood and that was one of the things I talked to him about that last time we were together, about how having children didn't really prepare us for the, the strange deep tenderness um, that we felt for these little lives, our grandchildren. And uh, we admitted to each other that it had taken us by surprise. Uh, Grand father, fatherhood. A kite for Avine, which is the uh, final poem in his final book. Uh, I find it very difficult, in a way, to, to read that without uh, peering over. But it's, uh, uh, it, it, I suppose, prophetic in as much as we all know we're going to have to go sooner or later. 
And now it hovers, tugs, dives, veers askew, lifts itself, goes with the wind, until it rises to loud cheers from us below. Rises, and my hand is like a spindle unspooling, the kite a thin-stemmed flower climbing and carrying, carrying farther, higher, the longing in the breast and planted feet and gazing face and heart of the kite flyer until string breaks and separate, elate. It ends with uh, one of the most beautiful words in the English language, windfall. I love that, windfall. And in a way that's what all art is. Uh, an old great poetry, it's a, it's a windfall. The kite takes off, itself alone, a windfall.